Global variables were one of the biggest point deductors on a lot of my projects. The teacher would say, program this, implement these methods, but you have to use global variables for all numbers or strings of text that don't change. If there was a number that's not zero, one, or two, that's hard-coded and is not a global variable, then you'd get points off. Let me know if you can relate to that, but in this video, if you're having trouble, hey, I'm here to help, okay? So I'm here. I'm gonna teach you about global variables and how you can use them in your Java programs and not get points off. <laughs> or if you just wanna learn about global variables in general. Hi, my name is Alex. I make Java tutorials on this channel every single week for you, just like this one. So if you're new here, you might be interested in that, then please consider subscribing. Let's start learning about global variables by going to file new Java project with me. And I'll just call it something like, I don't know, NASA, because we're global. Okay, on the source folder, go to new class. What's another, what's another global pun? I can't think of one. So we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna call it global. Together, hit this first check mark and hit finish. If your project says to create a global variable to the number of days in a year and a global variable um, to a list of all the months, all they're telling you to do is do it up here. We've got int days in year equals 365. And we've got the months in the year, months equal to Jan, Jan, March, and so on. I'm just gonna have three. It's bugging me, I'm gonna do the rest. It's my OCD coming out. Save it, and then we can use those variables inside of any method we want. We could use it in days and year. We could also print out months, or even in our own methods, like this. There are red underlines, and if you want, you can read the error but I think that that'll just confuse you more. All it's saying is that because of object-oriented programming, it makes accessing global variables kind of weird. So if you wanted to get days and year, you'd actually have to create um, a global variable, which is the class name. I'm just doing class name equals new class name. You'd have to do g dot days in year or g dot months for it to actually work so if we did this then we'd get the global variable but that is very annoying especially if you're in the same file oh and by the way um i just commented out these lines i did that by doing um command forward slash or control forward slash on windows to turn these into comments which don't get run and i'm doing the same thing to uncomment them so rather than do all of this nonsense, it's very ugly, I hate it. All you have to do to fix this is type the word static up here. And this static keyword is extremely important and something that confused the hell out of me for like seven years. But all it means is that you can access global variables without having to do the mess we just did. Without having to do global g equals new global and then the name dot days and year you can just say static up here and then call on normally. Global variables are very, very nice and they're mostly used for hard-coded values. Or if you're creating a class with certain attributes, a hard-coded value is just kind of like a number or word that just is. It just, it's just what it is. How many months are in a year? 12. Instead of creating a for loop that goes to length 12, you would make a for loop that goes to the months in a year. So it's more readable. Let me actually run this to show you it works. Days in the year, and then this is um, like the memory object of how the months is. But I'm gonna do what I, I, I just showed you for how global variables are actually used. Because your project might say to create these global variables, but like, why do you need them? So rather than do int i is zero, i is less than 12, i plus plus, and then print out whatever months is at that index. Save it and run it. It now works perfectly and gets every month in that array because the keyword static is here. 
and we declared it up here, which is the scope. And I'll get to scope in a second after this little demonstration here. Well, when you're reading this code, you might be like, well, why is 12 here? Like what if a partner came over and like, I was like, why is the number 12 there? Then you'd have to explain, well, 12 is the number of months in the year. You could do months.length. This is a good replacement for it. Now someone who else reads your code and knows exactly, oh, the, you're getting the number of months and going through it that way. But what some teachers might even prefer is if you had a global variable with the number of months in a year. So say months in year equals 12. And then you loop through up until the number of months in year, like that. So global variables make it easier to read your code and keep track of hard-coded values that are weird. You wouldn't want the numbers 365 and 12 and 57 and whatever strings everywhere all laid out in kind of appearing random places all over your code. You can't keep track of all the numbers and all the strings, but you can create variables that say exactly what it is so you know exactly when you see it and when you read the code. It makes it easier for debugging your code. It also makes it easier for when you're trying to add to your code. You're trying to make your project more organized so you don't have a harder time figuring out what it does. So I'm just going to delete this right now just so we can kind of see these global variables up top. The variables can be anything. See, we have integers, we have an array of strings. It could be an array list. Any normal variable can be a global variable. The reason they call it global is because it's seen throughout the entire file. The entire file is the scope. I put out a video last week about scope in Java. If you want to check out a more detailed video about exactly what scope of variables can be seen where. You know, that's a pretty common test question. You can make your life a little easier by checking out that video as well. But a little tidbit here is that wherever you declare your variables, whether they're global or whatever, whichever curly braces they're inside of is the scope. So since these are here and the curly braces it's inside of are here, this entire blue area is the scope. So any methods we add inside of these curly braces or any other if statements, for loops, while loops, whatever, they can all see days and year, months and year and months. And that's why we never got any errors. Really the biggest thing with global variables is make sure you have the static keyword here. And that's pretty much it. I wish someone had told me this when I was working on my projects up past midnight, trying to figure out how to create global variables. <sighs> But I hope you enjoyed, good luck, and have a great rest of your week.